course of the last week, three different editorials written by four different politicians have been published in The Guardian and they contain three very different visions for the future of Europe. Let's see the proposals they contain and think about whether they are a good idea or not. The first editorial was written by Emmanuel Macron, who after invoking European unity proposes a sweeping set of reforms. In order to combat foreign interference in elections, he proposes the establishment of a European agency for the protection of democracies, as well as a ban on political funding from foreign powers, and a ban on incitement to hatred and violence on the internet. To curb immigration, he wants more stringent border controls, as well as a unified EU-wide asylum policy and the European Council for Internal Security. To ensure the security of the EU, he proposes an increase in defense funding, a mutual defense clause, and the European Security Council. He wants to change the current neoliberal economic policies by penalizing or banishing of businesses that compromise strategic interests or fundamental values of the EU and preferring European companies in strategic businesses and public procurements. Furthermore, a EU minimum wage appropriate to each country should be instated and renegotiated every year. In terms of environmental policy, he sets the goal of zero carbon emissions by 2050 and 50% reduction in pesticides by 2025. A European climate bank and a European food safety force should be tasked with making those goals a reality. He writes that this imperative needs to guide all our actions, from the central bank to the European Commission, from the European budget to the investment plan for Europe, all our institutions need to have the climate as their mandate. In view of the recent discussions about the power of social media, he demands a European supervision, supervision of the major current digital platforms and a European Innovation Council budget on par with the EUS to incentivize digital industries. He also wants to remove the causes of the refugee crisis by supporting African development with investment, academic partnerships and edu education for girls. Lastly, he proposes a conference for Europe open to amending the EU treaties and attended by academics, business and workers representatives, as well as religious and spiritual leaders. So this is Macron's proposal. When I first read through it, I was genuinely surprised by the boldness of some of the proposals in it, but also scared by some of the Orwellian overtones like banishing incitement for hatred and violence on the internet, which can mean so much, and a council uh, against foreign interference in election, a European council, which does not sound very reassuring. Now that I prepared for this video, I noticed that while he gave a lot of ambitious goals and genuinely interesting goals, like for instance, reducing carbon emissions to zero by 2050, which would be in line with what the IPCC report recommended. He did not really tell much about, genu about the measures used to get there. Instead, he mostly just declared that he would want to establish this and this European authority and more and more, uh, this sounds like just an attempt to transfer power from the nation states to Europe. And I think it is genuinely meant as an attempt to transfer power from the nation states to Europe. And I think a lot of what Macron proposes here is a bit taking refuge in the European agencies because right now he's under a lot of pressure within France itself, France itself. Still, it is interesting that even someone who is pretty establishment like Macron would even consider these ideas, which a few years back, I think would have been beyond even discussion in this context at least 
and I think that is a good development. Still, I do not trust Macron a bit. And I, there are some small details which I noticed which are also not reassuring. Like for instance that he proposed zero carbon emissions by 2050, but he did not mention any reduce in carbon emissions by 2030. Which goals for carbon emissions have always been set in a way that they sound nice, but are so far removed that nobody really cares if they are not if there are no immediate reforms to them. And this way they have been put off and put off and put off. So that nowadays we are already in a way too late state of development where already people are dying from climate change. People are dying right now from climate change. And probably millions of people, maybe more, will die from climate change. So I'm just not convinced. I think it's a good thing that the discussion has moved so far outside of what was considered the general consensus a few years back, but I am just not convinced about the genuine intent of Macron to actually push anything through except to concentrate even more power within the bounds of the EU where it is very far removed from the general population and very far from removed from democratic measures. So I'm skeptical. I'm very, very skeptical, but I'm also glad that we are at least now at a point where these things are discussed. The second editorial was written by Jean-Luc Mélenchon and contains less goals, but more visions. The differences become clear when he demands the use of, that the use of pesticide is abolished immediately. He further wants to eradicate poverty, guarantee decent wages, restrict the income gap, and generally extend women's rights. He declares that we can bind the hands of tax and evaders right now if we want and even begin a new age of human civilization. He is no fan of the Franco-German alliance, which he wants to break up and realign France with South Europe. He does not fear the Russians, but financial interests and asks how can Macron lecture on democracy when the United Nations High Commissioner for Human Rights, the Council of Europe and the European Parliament have publicly voiced deep concerns about police violence in France. France. Instead of the stringent border control proposed by Macron, he wants to eliminate the causes of immigration. And lastly, but most importantly, he wants to exit the EU treaties. He closes by noting that if France can do, be of any use at all, it is by being seen as a partner in this process, rather than acting as a preacher who thinks it knows better. So that is Mélenchon. Mélenchon is a real socialist, and even for contemporary socialists, he is a pretty radical one. And I think you can notice that in what he is writing here. Like for instance, when he wants to usher in a new age of human civilization. I'm not per se opposed, but I am a bit skeptical about his um, fearlessness um, with regards to Russia. And when he says we should exit the EU treaties, I want more concrete details of what comes afterwards. because. I'm not hugely sold on the EU treaties, but I am sold on the idea of the EU and I don't want you to just abandon that. Furthermore, well, I think his critiques of Macron are spot on. There's not much to, to say about that, but I don't see much in the sense of solutions. Although Probably, if he were to actually gain power, he would have maybe not immediate solutions, 
but he would actually use his power to further the agenda or further an agenda I would agree with in a lot of details. But I am still very skeptical of the nationalism he in some sense seems to espouse. Not so much nationalism in the sense of we want France to be governing Europe, but nationalism in the sense of we want all the nations to, well, maybe not fend for themselves, but also not be unified in at least the current context. And again, I don't have much love for the current context, but I think we need some context in which these nations are unified. Lastly, we have an editorial written by Yanis Varoufakis and David Adler. They get the core criticism of Macron's policies right out of the way in saying that they are top-down and lack credibility and instead highlight the solutions of the new movement, DiEM25, starting with a new deal for Europe, which is co-authored by the people and ratified by a pan-European vote. Some highlighted components are a $15 billion investment into a Green New Deal and a solidarity program to channel central bank profits into measures that reduce poverty. What seems most important to them is that their proposals would not result in a further centralization of power, but instead are based upon the ideas of federalism and direct democracy. Yeah, I think that editorial is pretty spot on. To be fair, I have a large amount of respect for Varoufakis. I think his economic views are very refreshing in uh, mainstream economics, which is much more concerned with having nice models than with having models that describe reality. And what all I've heard from Diane25 has been sounded very very promising I really hope they are they have a good measure of success in the next uh, European parliamentary elections I think he is one of the few people who actually gets the big picture and this editorial doesn't really propose a lot of policies but it doesn't have to because these policies are actually highlighted within the writings of Diam25. So this editorial is more about why Macron's approach is dangerous. Yeah, as I said, I like all I've heard up to now. And of course the 500 billion dollar investment euro investment in the Green New Deal is a good first measure. I actually think the sum is not that much. I think we probably will need more, but 500 billion are at least a start. Um, a lot of the policies he highlights are based upon his thinking, which is very aligned with modern monetary theory. And for instance, his idea that the European Central Bank profits should be used as a measure against poverty, uh, against poverty are based upon the belief that the European Central Bank should not have any profits at all because it is a government institution and it basically prints its own money. So having profits is actually just sucking money out of the economy. As I said, everything in it sounds good. I like it. What I noticed was that this editorial did not mention the refugee crisis at all and Manon Trump's editorial only brushed on it. In general I noticed that in the current discussion the refugee crisis has gone largely out of focus. I'm not sure if this is because it has actually subsided to an extent or if it is because, well on the one hand the populists basically won most of Europe and now that they are in power they can't really gain votes by further 
um, talking about the refugee crisis because now it is their responsibility to stop it or or if it is just that new crises have superseded it like the Brexit crisis and so on in any case I'm mostly sold on the third editorial and in general on Diam25 and I'm still I still prefer Melanchon to Macron but I'm also a bit skeptical of Melanchon himself in any case I'm glad we are talking about those things right now because we haven't in a long time and this is very very refreshing and I think each of those editorials is at least a step in the right direction and I just hope it doesn't just stay with words I just hope actions follow and I am a bit afraid of the next um, parliamentary elections because it seems like the current coalition will break up and not gain enough votes to survive and it seems like the pop uh, the right-wing populists will once again gain ground and probably have a huge amount of influence in the next European Parliament which scares me and I don't know what will come afterwards because I'm a bit skeptical about also the financial stability of Europe right now and in general of the worldwide economy and it might actually be that Europe will or that the EU will break down it's possible I hope it doesn't come to that but what comes afterwards is anyone's guess I want you to subscribe and click the bell also I want your questions and your feedback you can send them to me by Facebook by Twitter and by email the links are below thank you for your time